I'm in a secret, undisclosed location at this time, but we'll wait for the background noise to go away. Here, just a second, the air compressor is running. Killing me. Killing me. All right, welcome back to the Quick Speed Shop. I just had an idea for a quick video here. I'm going on a long uh, trip this weekend with my van. So there's some things you're doing when you're going on a trip that you should probably check. So we're gonna do a little quick checklist here. We're gonna go to the whiteboard and do a little checklist for how to prep your vehicle for a long trip. All right, here we go. So let me explain again here. The fluids, you wanna check all your oils. So you wanna check your engine oil, your transmission oil level, your gear oil level. And I also check the washer fluid, so if you get in a dirty situation, you don't want to be out of washer fluid. So on, on the mechanicals, you want to check, make sure nothing's loose, dangling, you know, see like your exhaust system falling off, or, you know, if you're going to be pulling the trailer, check your trailer hitch, make sure it's not rusty, or your, your pin and all that's good shape. Um, I pull the trailer with my van a lot of the times. But check your tire pressure. Now, on most vehicles, on the door jam, they'll have a sticker, or in the, in the owner's manual, he'll say, what the recommended tire pressure is. Um, usually like on a car it's around 32 to 35 PSI. Um, if the tire, if you look on the sidewall, the tire also will tell you the maximum tire pressure at a certain PSI. And uh, my van, I've got E-rated tires on it, which is uh, 80, 80 PSI max for the max load. And I'm usually hauling a lot of weight in the van so I run my E-rated tires in the back right at the 80 PSI. And then the front, I run them about 65 PSI just so they don't beat on the ground so hard because they're because they're so hard with that much PSI in them. So I run staggered 65 and 80. Make sure all your exterior lights are functional, including your license plate light. Last thing you want to do is be on an out-of-state trip and get pulled over because the plate light was out and get a ticket out of state or something like that where you'd have to go back to court or send a ticket in because you can't go back to court. So make sure all your exterior, external lights are working. And then just in the miscellaneous, miscellaneous category, I like to have things clean. Um, my van sits all winter in the driveway and it gets a lot of film on the, on the glass from like the plastics in the sun. So I like to clean the windshield at least and usually clean the windshield in the side glass, at least in the front doors. Um, you know, windshield, side glass, clean the mirrors because they're usually dirty on the outside. I'm going on this big trip with a couple people in the van. I'm going to vacuum off the back and wipe all the dust off the dashboard. But this is just a quick tip of a few things you can do. So we'll go outside and we'll check out the van. I'll show you the I'll show you things I'm going to check. All right, here we are outside of the van. It's a little windy, but this is an ever never-ending winter we're having. It's April uh, like 16th, no April 17th tax day and you can see it's snowing but this weekend i got to go on this trip so let's check the van out first of all we're going to go ahead and open the hood so first thing i'm going to do i got some rags here they go ahead and they're going to check the oil these vans have about the world's longest longest dipsticks thing is, I don't know, almost three feet long. Good, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it off and stick it in there again and check it out. I just had this running a couple minutes ago, so the oil should be back down in the pan now. I'll go ahead and look. I'm actually about, I don't know, half a quart low, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw some oil in. When we get done, we'll check it again, but in the meantime, we'll check the other uh, fluids here. Um, trans fluid over here. This is even a longer dipstick. Look how long this sucker is. So, check it cold. It's, it's got a hot and a cold mark on it. If you can see me here, we got cold and hot, or I'm sorry, cold and then hot here, so we'll check it cold. I'm showing plenty, plenty of fluid, so we're good. 
Doesn't smell burnt. It's nice and pink in color as well. So plenty of tranny fluid. I always like to put the words facing the right correct way. A couple other things to check while right here. We'll cut, check the coolant level. The uh, cold level is here and the fluid level is here. Um, I know this is good. This van's got a rear seat heater and I know the hose drips once in a while. So I don't know. I'm like a less than a, I don't know, probably about a pint low. I'll go ahead and I'll top this back up when I get done. This is the master cylinder here. Master cylinder reservoir. It's got a max level on it. I can see by shaking it, I'm up to the max level on that, so that's good. So I'll go... Ah! Here comes the snow. Uh, we can check the power steering level, which also has a dipstick. That's on full cold right there, that's good. So you just want to do a once-over under the hood. Um, check your belts, check the hoses, make sure they're not dry-rotted or weird looking. We'll come over here, we'll check out the battery. Um, Want to make sure there's no corrosion on here. I actually had a problem with this van last year where it wouldn't start and acted like the battery is dead. It turns out it had corrosion under the uh, positive battery terminal. And it looks all right now because I put some dielectric grease on it. But it had a black corrosion buildup, so that would definitely leave you stranded. You also want to check the date on your battery. This one's marked out. Um, 2010, February 2010, which is actually eight years now. So this battery's probably getting towards the end of its life. So I'll be watching that to make sure it doesn't get a, leave me stranded somewhere, but eight to 10 years is what you usually get out of a de decent battery. And it's the interstate, it's this good quality battery. So we've checked the oil, we checked the transition fluid, we checked the power steering fluid, we checked the coolant level, we checked the brake fluid, we checked the washer fluid level. I know what I gotta add before my trip. So, next thing we're gonna do is go underneath the van. We're gonna check the rear differential oil. So we'll go do that now. All right, so to check the differential oil level, right here is the fill plug. I take a 3 8 ratchet, it goes right into the plug. I'm just gonna run it out of here. And you want to stick your finger in the hole and see if you can feel the oil. Yep. I got oil on me right there. I'm good. I'm just, it's just below the mark. So the rear end's got plenty of gear oil in it. Well, like I said inside, these got E-rated tires on this van. I run, uh, these have maximum lo uh, load of 80 PSI. I run 65 roughly on the front and I run close to 80 on the back. So. You can see, let's see, where does it say it on here? Max load at 80 PSI, it says right here, max load at 80 PSI. So I'm gonna go ahead and check these. It's been sitting all winter, so the tires might be a hair low. And make sure your most some gauges don't go up to 80, this one goes up to 150. So make sure you got the right style gauge for these big truck tires. I've got 50 in this front tire, it's cold out. But so I've got 50 PSI right now. I'm gonna add some tire air to this tire. I'll bump it up to 65. I got about 65 in the rear tire here. So everything has bled down a little bit over winter time. So I'm gonna go ahead and put air in the tires. But one thing to also check out for is dry rot. Um, these tires are date coded right there. You see this number 0211. That is uh, 2011. So this tire is seven years old. So I just want to give, a, give it a visual for any defects I can see. It's got a little bit of mud on the sidewall, but uh, not really any dry rot in it. The tread's still good. I got a lot of tread left, life left on it. Here's that data plate, or data sticker on the driver's side door jam that I referred to earlier that tells you everything about the vehicle. It tells you like the uh, axle code, the gear ratio, uh, the wheelbase, 138 inches on this vehicle. It tells you the the uh, year manufacturer, the date 498, the VIN number, uh, the the GVW and all that. So it also tells you your tire pressure. So here you go, the front tires, 16 by 7 inch rims, um, 55 psi cold. So I'm actually within the range running them. I usually run them 65 in the front, but it's 55 psi cold on the front and then 80 psi on the back. And factory size is 245, 75, 16 E-rated tires, which I have on here. 
the sticker will be somewhere on the door jam where you can see it on the driver's side but this information is also in your owner's manual but it's easy to see your tire pressure right here and some other stuff or if you need the VIN number f for any reason so there we go on the tire pressure you know it's always good to stay up on the vehicle maintenance but especially if something sits over the winter or you don't drive it very much take a few extra minutes to check the tire pressure check the oil check the uh, other fluids check your lights um, I didn't show you that but all the lights work on this the headlights tail lights and all that work so take a few minutes to do check some things out and it'll save you costly repairs or a breakdown when you're on your trip and uh, as always thanks for watching here at the quick speed shop please subscribe check out the other videos check out the playlists um, share with your friends thumbs up and uh, you can go to quick speed shop all one word on instagram it's quick speed shop and appreciate everybody watching